Blizzard warnings across parts of the Northeast and blizzard watches even on up toward Boston. We're not going to get as much snow on the Cape. We're going to get uh, just significant mixing with rain and snow mixing in. The snow starts in New York City. It's already snowing in D.C. by this time tomorrow morning. Snowing heavily in New York now, 8 o'clock. There could even be some thunder snow with this. This is a volatile system. Could put one to two inches of snow on the ground every hour for many hours and then by Wednesday it's completely gone. The winds are still going to blow, but it'll be completely gone. People saying, is this going to be a miss? National Weather Service says the least we're going to get here in New York City is 11. The least Bridgeport, 10. The most New York City could get is 23. That is not a miss to me, Chris. The most you could get here in Boston, about 25, 23. The least around 9. That is not a miss either. Look at Bedford at 24 inches potential if it's all snow. Now, there's some potential, Chris, that it mixes in with a little bit of either wet snow or rain that keeps your numbers down. You wrote that Wilders understands that culture and demographics are our destiny. We cannot restore our civilization with somebody else's babies. This is being condemned by many regions of American politics and citizenry. What did you mean? Well, of course, I meant exactly what I said, as it always is the case, Chris. And to expand on that a little further, um, I've, I've been to Europe and I've spoken on this issue. And I've said the same thing as far as 10 years ago uh, to the German people and to any population of people that is a declining population that doesn't, isn't willing to have enough babies to reproduce themselves. And I've said to them, you cannot rebuild your civilization with somebody else's babies. You've got to keep your birth rate up and that you need to teach your children your values. And in doing so, then you can grow your population and you can strengthen your culture. You can strengthen your way of life. Who's somebody else's babies? Chris, uh, we're a country here that, you know, if you take a picture of what America looks like, you can do it in a football stadium or a basketball court, and you see all kinds of different Americans there. Mm. We're pretty proud of that, that, that the, the different-looking Americans that are still Americans. And there's an American culture, an American civilization. It's raised within these children in the, these American homes. And that's one of the reasons why we require that the President of the United States be raised with an American experience. I mean, because it seemed like you were doing the opposite. Like you were trying to say someone else's babies means you're either white or you're not right. And as you know, that is anathema to what America's all about. Can we get agreement on that? Well, I, I want to, I, here's actually, if you go down the road um, a few generations or maybe centuries with the intermarriage, I'd like to see an America that's just so homogenous that it, we look a lot the same from that perspective. I think there's been far too much focus on race, especially in the last eight years. And I want to see that put behind us, and I want to be as bonded together. I gave a speech on this on Saturday, and half the liberals got up and left the room when I talked well, about because the when you say when you suggest to anybody, the divisions. But when they're you looking suggest, for hatred is the point, Chris. But hold on a second. Congressman, if you suggest that somebody else's babies shouldn't be welcome in a country, you seem inherently divisive. That's why I keep asking you, what was your intention with this? And you keep to seem doubling down on it. I mean, you said America's got lots of different faces. That's fine. But you keep making this point that this country needs to be about white people raising their birth rate and not bringing in other people. That's exactly what America is not. But, but Chris, I never have made that point. I've never said that. I've been, been a characterized as saying that. I've had the blogs out there say I said that, but I tell them, go back and watch the tape, listen to it, just listen to the language. Our language is precise. That's not out there. But this is an effort on the left, I think, to break down the American civilization and the American culture and turn it into something entirely different. I'm a champion for Western civilization, and yes, our English language is a big part of it. It's a carrier of freedom. Right. Wherever the English language has gone globally, freedom went with it. I just want to just go back at this one more time, uh, just because it's that important. A Muslim American, hmm? an Italian American, a Christian American, a Jewish American, you do realize that they are all equal, right? They are all the same thing. We don't need babies from one of those groups more than we need them from other groups. Do you agree with that? Well, I would say that it Why do you on pause the, the on a question like families. that, Congressman? What do you mean? What, it doesn't depend on any definition. Because, because you're I either an American you an or you're objective not. Objective answer, Chris. Yeah, but either you, either simple. a Muslim American, uh, an Italian American, because... an Irish, Scotch, German American, which is what your roots are. Either those are all equal things, 
or they are not? What is your answer? They contribute differently to our culture and civilization. There are moderate Muslims that are equal to in all these categories. I that said you a described. Muslim there are American. Others, that are, there are people who have Chris lived that are here who are assimilated. In their families. Yeah, but there are a lot of if people teaching hatred in their families who are white, I think who are assimilate. Irish, who are Italian, who are Muslim. A lot of people preach hate. Welcome back. President Trump trying to make good on his campaign promise to build a wall along the U.S. border with Mexico. But a new report this morning says that the White House may have to make cuts elsewhere, including airport security, the Coast Guard, all to pay for that wall. Joining me right now is former TSA Chief Admiral James Loy. He's also a, a former D Deputy Secretary of Homeland Security. Sir, it's good to have you on the program. Thanks so much for joining us. Good morning, good morning, Maria. Nice to be with you. Talk to us about the challenges uh, that, that you and some of your colleagues have faced at the border uh, in, in terms of the budget that we are expecting this week and the expected cuts to things like TSA. Can you characterize the situation at hand right now in terms of challenges? Well, I think it's a very real challenge, and part of it is just uh, is lining up the budget activity against the uh, policy rhetoric of the administration. Uh, I think we all are absolutely uh, uh, delighted that the president is going to upgrade the strength of our national security envelope, but there needs to be a recognition that the national security envelope in the wake of 9-11 does include uh, the Coast Guard and agencies within DHS. It's not just the four DOD services. By law, the Coast Guard is the fifth armed service of the United States, uh, and the uh, idea of cutting agencies that are contributing uh, to border security at the same time you're trying to strengthen border security uh, needs to be just uh, dealt with a little more constructively. And I think the budget passback process is uh, one of the tools to use to make that happen. So, so there is a draft proposal from the uh, Office of uh, Management and Budget, uh, which says that the Coast Guard's budget would be paired by $1.3 billion, spending on the Transportation Security Administration, TSA, and FEMA would get sliced by $900 million. Now, candidate Trump, of course, promised to build this southern wall, and you have to have a way to pay for that. So how would you expect things to change at TSA as a result of budget cuts that we're expecting uh, to be announced this week? Well, if, if those budget cuts were sustained, uh, the challenge is uh, what happens at the borders, whether the wall is there or not. Uh, and if, in fact, the wall was even built, uh, the natural extensions of the wall to the Gulf of California on the west and to the uh, Gulf of Mexico on the east is all maritime uh, uh, provinces where the Coast Guard is the principal law enforcement and national security agency to deal with what goes on there. So at the moment, uh, the uh, Coast Guard, for example, is, uh, uh, is intercepting at sea some 200 tons of drugs every year, 600 I'm sorry, 6,000 illegal migrants are collected at sea uh, before they even reach those borders. So to take away the capability to, to make constructive progress in the very areas that you're looking to sustain uh, makes little sense if you're cutting the agencies that are actually doing that. And as it relates to national security itself, the fifth armed service of, the, uh, of this country, the Coast Guard, uh, is making significant contributions in CENTCOM, as the fifth fleet commander, uh, what they can do without the unique capabilities of boarding uh, and dealing with the uh, oil rigs in the Gulf of, uh, or in the Persian Gulf. Yeah. Uh, ask the SOUTHCOM commander, now the new Secretary of Homeland Security, what were the kind of ships to put to sea in his Navy, so to speak, in SOUTHCOM. They were all white ships with stripes on them. They were not Navy gray hulls. Mm. So there just needs to be a learning curve uh, uh, dealt with here to recognize the legitimacy of these kinds of contributions to the very thing the president wants to strengthen. So is there something that you want to make sure must have in that budget come Wednesday, given that you've been on the well, front lines? Well, I think uh, w without a doubt, the uh, strengthening of uh, border agents, which is in the budget, is good. Uh, the bed count with regard to dealing with uh, the collection of illegal agents in, in the deportation efforts is very good. But the Coast Guard's budget and the TSA budget need to be sustained at levels that allow the growth and modernization uh, of their capabilities, both in the airports around this country uh, and at sea. Donald Trump's wiretapping claims to rest. The president has one of two choices, either retract or to provide the information that the American people deserve.
Last weekend, the president claimed that former President Barack Obama wiretapped Trump Tower during the election, but so far, the president has provided no proof to back up his accusation. The White House asked Congress to investigate the wiretapping claims, and the House Intelligence Committee incorporated it into its Russia investigation. According to the Associated Press, the committee asked the White House to turn over its evidence by Monday. But Senator Roy Blunt pointed out that the White House shouldn't need Congress to investigate. As president, Trump could just ask intelligence officials for wiretapping evidence. Hello and thanks for joining us from our studios in Israel. I'm Aaron Porras here with ILTV's Morning Briefing. This morning, two border police officers were moderately wounded in a stabbing attack in Jerusalem. The stabbing took place shortly after 4 a.m. at the Lions Gate near the Old City. The attacker entered a guard booth where the policeman had been stationed and attacked them with a butcher's knife. The attack was ended when at one point one of the officers was able to fatally shoot the terrorist. The assailant has been identified as Ibrahim Mahmoud Mata, a 25-year-old resident of East Jerusalem. Hours after the attack took place, police raided the suspect's home in Jabal Mukaber neighborhood and found a Hamas flag. The rash of knife and vehicular terror attacks dubbed the Lone Wolf Intifada started in October 2015 over fears that Israel had been planning to change the status quo in the Temple Mount in Jerusalem, an accusation that the state has vehemently denied. According to reports, the Palestinian Authority security forces used live fire, tear gas, and stun grenades to end a protest gathered in the Daheshi refugee camp outside Bethlehem in the West Bank last night. The rioters were throwing rocks and Molotov cocktails, according to the Palestinian media. The protesters were organizing against the legal charges brought against six Palestinian activists arrested by the PA last year and against alleged police brutality during a demonstration outside the magistrate's court in Ramallah earlier in the day. The six activists under legal proceedings were charged last year for possession of illegal weapons and planning attacks on Israel. One of the detained activists, Basil al araj was even killed by Israeli defense forces earlier this month when they tried to arrest him. al araj died during the ensuing shootout. Palestinian Ma'an News reports that six protesters were detained and 11 injured. A recent report by the Shin Beit Security Service has said that five Palestinians from a Hamas cell in the West Bank have been arrested. The Shin Beit said Sunday that the group is charged on suspicion of committing a number of terrorist acts. The alleged Hamas cell members come from the village of Bidu near Jerusalem. They are suspected of throwing firebombs, placing explosive devices, and shooting at the Haradal settlement near Jerusalem in 2015. These are just a few of the recent arrests made by the Israeli Shin Bet in recent months. Two men from the northern West Bank and Hebron, respectively, were arrested for planning attacks in Israel in early February. In December alone, the Shin Bet claims to have arrested over 20 Hamas men planning suicide bombings or other attacks in Israel. In January, an IDF Central Command officer said hundreds of terrorist attacks have been averted in Judea and Samaria, despite the relative increase in number. It's been just one week since the Israeli Knesset passed legislation allowing the foreign ministry to ban anti-Israel or pro-BDS activists from entering the country, and it seems no time has gone to waste in choosing the first target. Hugh Lanning, the British former chairman of the pro-BDS Palestine Solidarity Campaign, has just been denied entry to Israel according to statements released by the Interior Ministry's Population and Immigration Authority and the Ministry of Public Security. Lanning will be stopped at the airport and returned to the UK later tonight. Public Security Minister Gilad Erdan said, quote, Those who act against Israel must understand that the reality has changed. No sane country would grant entry to central pro-BDS figures who want to harm it and isolate it. End quote. Today on Purim, Israel's President Reuven Rivlin gave out traditional Purim Mishloach Manot, or gift baskets, to female combat soldiers at the Ofer checkpoint near Ramallah. The President was quoted as telling the combat soldiers stationed there that alongside every great male fighter is a wonderful female fighter. In the traditional Purim gift basket, there was a handwritten note from the president and his wife saying, quote, To our heroic female soldiers, we love and embrace you for what you are. Thanks to what you are. Go forth with your strength and redeem Israel. End quote. Combat soldiers weren't the only ones to get a personalized message this Purim. On Sunday, Iranian Foreign Minister Mohammad Javad Zarif accused Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu of distorting history by repeatedly saying that modern Iran, like ancient Persia, is bent on annihilating the Jewish people. 